Hello and welcome to another in our Sacred Calendar series. Today we're looking at Halloween with Tom O'Loughlin. Why are we looking at Halloween? Is it really in the Christian calendar? Curiously it is. Well just look at the term. Halloween is the eve of All Hallows Day, All Saints Day and in the Latin Church all Saints Day is one of the important festivals. So you have 1st of November, All Hallows Day, All Saints Day, 2nd of November, All Souls Day, and then you have the day before, which is Halloween. And it's a feast that's very interesting for me because I, I'm an Irish theologian, I come from Ireland, and Halloween is, and All Hallows Day, is a gift of Christianity in Ireland to the universal, to, well, to the Western churches. There are many ways of organising the year, but one way of organising it is to organise it in terms of the amount of light. And so the least amount of light is, on, is in the winter solstice, and six weeks either side of that will give you roughly the end of October and the beginning of February. So one way of organising the year is to say winter begins on the 1st of November and ends at the end of January. And for instance, in Ireland still today, people would still consider that winter begins on the 1st of November and, and consequently the seasons would move around on quarter days from that point. And that actually is a way of looking at the year which predates Christianity. And so the, early, the, the, the Christian church takes it over and at the, end of the, at the end of the autumn there was festivities to celebrate the end of autumn and those festivities focused on, from folklore evidence we know, focused on remembering the past, remembering those who had died and that then generates the Feast of All Saints but then there's a complexity in Latin theology that the saints are those who are already in heaven. But what about the people who are dead but are still being prayed for and who are thought, well, if they're still being prayed for, they can't yet be in heaven. And that generates the whole memory of all souls. And so there's All Souls Day. And the festival becomes a general festival celebrating the end of autumn and so there's festivities for the end of autumn. There's a sense of a small party to, you know, let, let's, let's have, one, let's have one, one last party before we really head into winter. And then there is this sense of celebrating, of celebrating the memory of death. So there's the joyous memory of death in All Saints Day. And then there's the sad memory of death and praying for the dead, which is All Souls Day. And that, for instance, People put R.I.P. and we think rest in peace, almost as if you're addressing the corpse. You know, you rest in peace. But R.I.P. requiescat in pace is actually a prayer to God. May that person, he or she, rest in peace. Domine requiescat in pace. O Lord, let him or her rest in peace. So then I'll, I'll since All Hallows is the joyful day, you will have a joyful festival and you get all the shenanigans that go on with it. So it, it, it starts off as the trimmings. The remembrance of a pagan festival become the trimmings of a Christian festival and it's a Christian festival that over a 72-hour period goes from the joys of the saints to the deep sadness and prayerfulness for the dead all souls. Well that's very interesting. So it starts off as a joyful festival but it, it seems to have become a kind of quasi scary festival. Now I'm struck by the fact that when I was a child Halloween was not a big event. Um, we were very much into celebrating Guy Fawkes Day which I imagine was not much observed in Ireland but uh, Halloween was not. Now why do you think Halloween has become so popular? in the last 20 years or so. Well, first of all, just let me confirm that. Uh, it was, you know, in, in Ireland, the fireworks were set, out, set off on Halloween and uh -huh. the 5th of November, no one even heard of it. The only thing yeah. you heard of was if you saw television coming from Britain, 
you would see references to to to, to fireworks night and uh, but so yes the guy fawkes was what was celebrated in britain in ireland halloween was the big festival i think it's to do with the bizarre effect of as the organized churches continue to decline there are remnants of Christian belief that are mutated to become popular general festivals and a festival that talks about the eerie the unusual the spooky yes, you know it's, it's linked with ghosts and so on it's course, linked with it? ghosts so there's the sense of all souls there it's linked it's linked with ghosts it's linked with witches on broomsticks it's spiky hats and all of these things that is part of the traditional imagery of all Hall of mm. halloween but in a world which is where organized religion has less hold but diffused religion people are creating their own sacred their own sacred calendars this is something that has the attraction of the eerie one of the fundamental religious instincts it's also something that is then taken up and packaged in a way that's attractive to children mm -hmm. so you know I, I was in a i was having a pizza uh, near halloween uh, last year and there were special halloween pizzas so th this curious you know mix and match of modernity mm -hmm. And the, the trick or treat, that sense of the, naughtiness being allowed. Naughtiness being allowed. Mm. Uh, when I was a child, trick or treat was that you went around to, you went around begging nuts and apples. Uh, and hopefully, you know, you, 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 you knocked on doors where you knew there were people who were, who were, going, to, who were going to play the game and would give you nuts and apples. So that was the trick, that was the origin of trick or treat. It's, it's interesting, there's a, there is a there is a new sacred calendar emerging mm. which is which is driven partly by the need to have markers in the year partly by the need to make days special partly by the instinct of the eerie the in you know what rudolf otto would have called the gans andera the, the the otherness has to be celebrated and Halloween is a festival. It's a sort of a do-it-yourself festival where you can celebrate the the eerie, and somehow it's it, it the eerie comes close. You, and so an interesting thing is the the candle in the window, which is of course, the, the, the this is the candle lit in memory as as a prayer has now become the candle in the pumpkin, mm. which has become sort of the the bizarre the bizarre image of this festival and you mm. see perfectly good vegetables being wrecked <laughs> to create to create to create the, the these lanterns a, a curious mixture distant memory of the christian lighting a candle as a prayer the pumpkin comes from halloween in america and now it's being celebrated in places like britain where it had disappeared 500 years ago or maybe 400 years ago as a as a, a a sort of a do-it-yourself sacred calendar so it's a very curious to me halloween brings up the complex history of the christian liturgical year and these two festivals still celebrated in roman catholic churches of all saints and all souls days all souls is an image in britain is just a college in oxford but it is still a festival in the, the the Roman Catholic calendar. It also brings up how that calendar was related to the, the the cultural life of a part of the Western Church in the first millennium, and which in the third millennium is being given the treatment of popularity and all sorts of promotion, and yet at the same time is allowing people to create a marker with a religious dimension in their own year. Well, thank you very much, Tom. I think this is perhaps the first of our sacred calendar uh, films where we've actually uh, discussed the question of a, an emerging 
new and popular sacred calendar. So I think that's interesting in itself. And if you are thinking of scooping out a pumpkin, I think we would want to urge you to either make soup or make a pie with the very wholesome contents. And enjoy Halloween, everybody. <laughs>